What is going on, everybody? Hello, hello. Getting things started. What is up, Matt? How you doing? Thanks for coming in, buddy. Hello, everybody. Hey, Robo, how you doing? Everybody, thank you guys for stopping by again. My name is Ian, aka IR Sculpt. Some of you might know me, and I make toys. I freelance digital sculpting. And today we are in ZBrush Core. And I'm really, really excited about that. Hopefully today we're also on all three, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Last time I was on, there's a little bit of a weirdness, so feel free to... Looks like we're connected, so that's great. Uh, before we get started, I just want to quickly make sure and shout out for those of you who are seeing this after the stream. Um, go ahead and comment down below if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, hit that notification, because... There are tons of artists here that just love sculpting, that just love using ZBrush, and we're here to answer your questions. So come on in, come on in. Hey, Ian, very, hey, you're very on time, dude. Yeah, I'm on time today because uh, I want to make sure that, that was, you know, that's what happened last week. I guess I popped on and something weird happened with YouTube and it just, it just axed it. So, so we're going a little early. Hey, Ryan, what's up? I'm doing good, man, doing good. Good on YouTube so far. Awesome. Very great. Doing great. So um, today we're in ZBrush Core. Now, real quick, I know some of you guys follow me on my personal streams. Um, I was making this Cthulhu in normal ZBrush, but then I downscaled it and I brought it into ZBrush Core because I want to answer your ZBrush Core questions. Last week we did ZBrush Core Mini, and that's a completely free program. But now we're going up to ZBrush Core. If anybody's interested in ZBrush Core, it is $180 USD. So go check that out. Go to pixelogic.com if you're interested. But ZBrush Core is very powerful and there's a lot you can do with it. And it's a great way to start. So we're going to get into it. But I took my base mesh of my Cthulhu and I brought them into Core. And we're going to finish them off in here. I'm also going to be making a base with some tree sculpting, which will be my... Third or fourth time sculpting a tree, so we can get into that. So a lot of fun stuff. So a little bit of environment, a little bit of creature stuff. What you gonna do, Sonny? <laughs> We're gonna be making stuff, Mr. Sanson. All right. So, and again, as always, if you guys have any questions, please, please, please ask me. Uh, this will be ZBrush Core dedicated for today. Let me get my glove on and let's get going. And happy Sunday, everybody. Hopefully your guys' weekend was well. Anybody do anything fun or exciting? What's up, Chris? Hello, hello. All right. I got my power glove on. We're good to go. Yay, sculpting. What's up, Nathan? Yeah. So, right now, one of the big differences you'll notice in ZBrush Core, if you're used to ZBrush, is anytime you open up a menu on the side, you don't have to hold shift to open that menu. It automatically keeps all the rest open, which, you know, depending on how your workflow is, could be good, could be bad. i not used to that, so that's going to be a little weird. I also haven't jumped in core for a little bit, so it's kind of refreshing myself. I'm going to go ahead and actually rename some of my sub tools, get a little bit more organized. Let's put this in a folder. Cthulhu. There we go. Drop the eyes in. Let's rename this body. I try my best to stay organized. Doesn't always work though. And the other big thing you'll notice out the gate is you can't save any type of sub tools, but we can save projects. So that's how ZBrush Core works. I reworked my Bucky O'Hare and now I'll be keying him tonight. Yes, awesome, Matt. That's great. That is very, very cool. Okay. Let's get into it. Also, too, let me know if the music is a little too loud. I had to readjust it. All right, let's get doing it. So before we get into massive detailing, I'm actually going to start sculpting the base for him. So let's let's do that. Let's plop over here. And actually, let's insert a cylinder. And let's grab that transparency. Let's bring this down. So I'm basically going to be making him stand on like some sort of, uh, some sort of tree. Uh, not tree. Uh, some sort of ground, and we'll put some trees below him. The trees will also be kind of like the scaling of of him, so that way we get a sense of who he is. 
So let's actually, let's drop, let's drop the transparency. Let's, there we go. Uh, let's see, not much, just posing this thing. <laughs> Let me see. Finishing this explorer study environment. Nice. I would love to know more about King because I've always had trouble with that. Not a problem. Absolutely. Now we are in ZBrush Core, so the way I would approach keying in normal ZBrush versus ZBrush Core, normal ZBrush I would actually really approach keying from a scale issue, but one of the ways that you could actually get into keying really, really quickly in, in Core, in fact, let me let me save this real fast and we can we can do that real quick. Okay. Let's go ahead and make this cylinder a polymesh 3D. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert a cube. So for just basic keying at the moment in time, uh, the way I do it, usually I use the Z modeler brush, but you can see here, we actually don't have a Z modeler brush. So the way I would key in core is a little bit different. It's a little bit more of an old school method, but what I would do so I would actually take us, uh, I would take my cube, something like this. Let's say we're just gonna use a cube. I'm gonna select this bottom part a little bit, kind of fan that out. I'd actually scale this down a little bit. I'm kind of, I'm gonna kind of move through this a little quickly just because, actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna take my time. Let's do this. Let's turn around and dynamesh it. There we go, something like that. And I'd actually soften this all up, keep this nice and nice and smooth, something like that. Now I've covered how to do keying and stuff like that on my own on my own channel. If you guys want to follow me over on uh, YouTube and stuff, I actually covered in depth keying and normal ZBrush. So if you guys would like to follow me there, go check out YouTube. Um, I have videos there specifically for that. In fact. You plop over to here, you go to my channel, and you go to ZBrush Help. You can go ahead and pause that. You can actually come through how to cut your models with dynamic thickness. So we can actually, if you guys would like to go directly to that video, you can go ahead and do that. And my YouTube is ever growing. It is, it is happening. <laughs> hey IR, do you usually have a 2D concept before 3D modeling? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Um, that is crucial. Now, I don't always follow the concept to the letter unless it's a client concept. Typically, I will gather a bunch of reference using, you know, stuff like PureRef, for example. Here's my tree stuff. Um, and I will actually, in fact, let me load up my other one too. I have a Cthulhu concept. Yeah, go ahead and save this, which is called this tree. So I have my Cthulhu concept, the pose that I really liked, and then a bunch of Cthulhus, body types, veins, all sorts of stuff. So anything that I, f I think might be useful, I will take this and use it as reference only. But yes, short answer, yes. I use it, I use reference all the time and concepts help you visualize. But I try to more use it as guidelines, not necessarily follow it to the letter. Unless, like I said before, it is concept because, I mean, it's concept for uh, production because a client said, here, please model this thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that Core didn't have Z modeler. Yeah, Core does not have modeler. So we're going to approach this a little bit differently. Okay. So let me go ahead and just kind of smooth this out a little bit. And what you can do as well is you can actually make some sharp edges. We're going to go to... Modify topology, delete hidden, and then close holes, which will give us a little bit. So you can you can come in here and actually get some decent results. Delete hidden, close holes, get some sharp edges. Okay. Now let's say this is my key and it's ready 100%. How you'd want to key is actually keep the item that you want to cut into. You want to actually have that on uh, on top, registering onto the bottom. Grab this guy, I'm gonna bring this in here. There we go. 
And then we're going to come here. Let's see. Magnifying glass works. Yay. You're actually going to want to turn around and have this part uh, paired to this item. I wonder if we can use folders. Let's try that. It has been a while since I've been in here. I apologize. Call this cut. There we go. Let's do that. Okay. We may have to do a Dynamesh cut. It has been a day since I popped in here. I apologize. There we go. Subunion. I think this will work. Let's find out. So let's go here. Oh, man. I do apologize, guys. Let me see. I'm, like, fumbling my way around this. Let's... Let's try. Let's see something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to practice this. I actually may have to come back and have you guys reach out to ask ZBrush for ZBrush Core on this one. I do apologize. Let me see if this will work. Yeah, that's... Okay. Wow, I haven't cut in core in a long time, so I do apologize. Hey, well, also doesn't have live bullions. It does not have live bullions. Our hands are kind of tied. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. It has been a day. I do apologize. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and stop right here because I don't want to answer a question I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, for ZBrush Core, please go to pixelogic.com um, or go to Ask ZBrush. And I'm sure you'll find a video exactly how to do it within Core. But to do it in ZBrush, um, I have a link for that and I've showed you guys before. So, but I would like to stick in Core today. So I do apologize for that. Yeah, you can't Boolean. Nope, can't Boolean. And I think the way I haven't Dynamesh cut in a long time. And I think that's how you'd have to do it. And what I would recommend doing is go to YouTube and then I would do ask ZBrush Dynamesh cut. If I can't get you the answer, this is how I would do it. Go back. All right, can I create a hole? I would follow this link right here. I apologize, guys. Hey, what is going on? Also, give me one second. It's like all of a sudden 100 degrees in my house. One second, guys. Sorry about that. You got a fan on me now. Yeah, I think the old method is you have one set of subtractive and merge them into one dyne mesh. Yeah, I think that is correct. Yeah. Yeah, let me let me see. I think one of them has to be merge folder. Yeah. It's something like that. Here we go. Actually, just with that sentence, I just remembered what you're doing. So subtract, set that in, merge folder. I th think that's how you would have to do it. But like I said, yeah, go to ZBrush, ask ZBrush still. That's how you would do it in core. But follow that to askzbrush.com. Again, it's been a while and apparently I forgot, so I apologize. Yeah, you'd set up the same way you would folder cut, then press boolean mesh button. But it would open a sub tool. You have to pin it back if I remember correctly. Yeah, but we don't have booleans here. We do not have it here. But because I because I can't remember, I would just refer you to Ask Brush at that point. Yeah, sorry. I feel bad. I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I just caught that. It looked like a statement, and it's definitely asking. But you can't you can't boolean. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so. Core related stream today. I'm also going through to honestly, I kind of popped in to give it more of a of a like first hand 
review of the new update because I haven't jumped in core in a very long time. I popped in here for like two minutes yesterday just to kind of eye it around. So seeing what's missing and what's not, they added thick skin, which is really, really cool. I really like that feature a lot. Deformation, they have contrast, which is awesome. So I really like that too. No, Brett, you're good. All right, thanks. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's continue forward. So today I'm going to be... I also want to see something. Is there an insert? Aha, there it is. Yes, there is. Perfect. So I'm actually going to insert a Z-sphere. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to be making a tree. I'm going to duplicate and kind of change around. So we're going to be making a tree in core, which will be part of our base, which is good. It is very interesting to see what's missing, yeah. What's what's interesting, in my opinion, is like ZBrush... Um, whatchamacallit? ZBrush... Um, core Mini. Wow, I can't speak today. Zebra's Core Mini was actually, what's really interesting about it is like so much is stripped that I just kind of treated it like traditional sculpting and just went in and started making stuff. Which, by the way, guys, you guys were here last time. I actually printed. Let's, let's go over here real quick to full screen. You're gonna get a big, you're gonna get a big me, but the little wizard guy printed him out. There we go. So I am putting him up on my My Mini Factory, and he'll be available to download if you would like. But he came out pretty cool. Let's see if we can get a close up. There he is. Little mushroom wizard dude. So this is what Zebra's Core Mini did for us last week. So let's see what we could do with Core. He needs a name. I have not named him yet, but I'll have you guys name him. What would you guys like to name him? <laughs> it's big old belly button. I know, right? I just called him Mushroom Wizard. I'm just waiting for my mini factory to, like, approve him. <laughs> Alright, I'm glad you guys like him. But yeah, he'll be available to download very very soon so okay let's go ahead and draw out some shapes let's actually turn on there we go if you hold shift that kind of sets up right there and then I said W for move and we're gonna kind of move it up kind of get the trunk a little bit let's touch that and let's scale it something like that I haven't this is really exciting I was actually really excited to get Z sphere going too Name him Commander Pizza Topping. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Let's do it. Uh, how does my mini factory prove them? Do they print them out to see if they work? I have no idea. I think they run them through like their own little slice, little slicer or something like that. I have actually no idea how they do it. I just wait until they say, yeah, that's good. Honestly, I haven't used them in a long time either, so... Um, but usually when I throw stuff up for free, that's usually where it goes. Okay. All right, let's also turn off double. What I'm going to do is touch this one, and let's hit Q for quad, or for draw. I was going to say quad draw. I don't know why. I've been re too much. W for move. So I'm kind of going to go with, like, a haggard tree. So get kind of some anatomy going here. Maybe we'll make a couple different types. There we go. And then let's hit Q again. W, let's kind of move it out. Hit A every once in a while to see what we're getting. A to switch back. <laughs> My Salisa is the mush wizard. <laughs> there we go. Q again, we're gonna go ahead and touch that guy. Move it here. So trees do have an anatomy. And so we get to kind of just try to follow that as much as possible. Luckily, trees are really fun. And they just kind of go up and twist. So we can have a lot of fun with this. Let's come down here. 
Again, let's hit Q. Let's draw out some roots. Maybe we'll do a couple. Like that. Hit move, pull that out. Uh, there was a group of people that got a small amount of money to test print a model. But they stopped paying them. Oh, that's fun. That's always fun. There we go. So right now I'm just giving spots for where like the root of the tree would be digging into the ground. Something like that. There we go. Hit shift. And just kind of move that around. We're going to scale it back down once we get what we want. Are there any environment artists in the house? I am not an environment artist in any way, shape, or form, but I do find it super enjoyable to take some time off of sculpting a character and sculpt just something a little different. Hey, what's up, Lewis? How you doing? Shiitake of the Marshwood. <laughs> oh, you guys are so creative. I love it. There we go. Hit A again, just kind of see where this is going. There we go. And really, I'm just going to be using clay buildup and snake hook to finish it off. So I'm really just going for the main bulk of the tree itself. I'm actually not trying to shape the entire thing. I, th I think that's just not going to be fruitful. Let the sculpting guide me. Hey, all with Quixel Bridge out there. I'm loving messing with environments. Nice. I haven't tried that yet. Okay. Get something kind of like that, which looks pretty good. Now we want to come down to adaptive skin. And something that I've noticed is if you turn off, let's see if it works in normal core. But if you turn off, yeah, there we go. So if you turn off Dynamesh resolution, like all the way down to zero, it actually gives you polygroups in, and uh, some sort of like nice edge flow instead of just Dynamesh. If you hit the Dynamesh, hit A, it gives you that Dynamesh preview. Then you would have to Z remesh it. But the Z remesher here is limited to only being able to just kind of do it on the fly. However, ZBrush decides, you have no control in core to just Z remesh. So I highly recommend going to adaptive skin and turning the Dynamesh feature off. And then now you get some sort of, uh, um, you get some topology that you can start to subdivide right off the bat, which is really, really cool. To A again. And each time you bring out a new piece or draw a new piece, it's just gonna, it's just gonna go ahead and give you that poly group, so. Oops, let's go ahead, there we go. Kind of bring that there. Maybe stretch that out a little bit. So we'll do some kind of like dead tree and then we'll do like a, a couple thin trees and then we'll just kind of go from there. Okay. Let's go ahead and take that. I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to call this the tree OG, the original tree. I'm going to duplicate it. Control shift D, which will duplicate any item or any folder or sub tool you have. And then I'm going to go down to adapt size and make adapt skin. Which should give us this. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And then, so I guess I didn't need to duplicate. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and paste this. So I'm going to create a folder called this trees. Put the base in there. Perfect. And then I'm just going to paste that right in. Very cool. Let's actually hit solo and let's see how massive our tree is, which is pretty huge. So I'm going to scale this down and we're going to start placing it. Hey all, what's up Glowbox? Uh, did anyone have a question for an environment artist? I was just wondering if there is any environment artist in the house. I definitely want to get more into it. So, you know, drawing, drawing things like you know, sculpting trees and stuff like that. It's always, it's always fun to see what other people use ZBrush for. There 
There we go. So we get something like that. And we'll end up sculpting asymmetrically this tree here in a little bit. I'm actually going to duplicate it. Control shift D. I'm going to bring another one on the other side and we'll sculpt that one just a little bit different. But this will help us give us some scale on how big we want them. We actually may want a smaller tree too. You're an environment artist put on games, so Unreal Engine ZBrush Quizzle. Nice. That's really, really cool. Oh man, is the tree going to be with a wizard's home? We can definitely put him in there. That would be... <laughs> I love doing that. Okay, great. Put that there. And let's make one more. Let's make one more tree. So let's actually... We have that one. Let's insert a new Z-sphere. So this out. And let's make one more. So let's hit, let's hit E to scale it down. Let's bring this up. There we go. And we'll make some like tall, narrow trees. Just getting started with brush core. I literally started a month ago, so I'm learning as much as I can. Heck yeah. Well, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, core it definitely is a stripped down version of ZBrush, but it is affordable and there is a lot you can do with it. So. Can you make custom brush it le uh, a custom leaf brush in core? No, you can't make. Uh, let me let me just verify this real quick. Hold on. Yeah, no, you cannot make your own custom brushes. Everything you do, you're gonna have to. Yeah, you can't bring in a custom brush whatsoever. No making. All I have is modifiers, auto masking, and tablet pressure, which I never mess with. And then of course. Auto masking back face, one of the most important key features is here, and that's really good. But no, unfortunately, you won't be able to make your own custom brushes in core. Okay, let's go ahead and draw this. Let's pop this on top. Hold shift, that snaps. W, draw this out. We're going to bring this up. Go ahead and move that. I'm glad you're doing a tree. I have to learn how to do semi-realistic trees for my short production class. Need to make nine unique trees in three species. Oh, that is awesome. Definitely pull reference. Um, here's a reference I have, which is kind of a concept I really like, some leaves and stuff. And then most importantly, the tree anatomy. If you type in tree anatomy, you're gonna get a lot of cool stuff. Um, but yeah, but definitely it's really, I find Z modeler to be your best friend when you're trying to do stuff like this. And I think honestly, I probably could have just stretched this out, but just could put a little guy right here. We'll pop this up like that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, reference is key, guys. Absolutely. Especially when you're learning new, you know, when you're learning new um, techniques or you're trying to learn uh, new anatomy, reference is really key. So it's just really going to help you. Plot this here. Let's go ahead and drag this out. There we go. So we'll have something like this to work with. And you know what? For this one, I'm going to leave this one dynameshed. And I'm going to do that on purpose because I'm going to really use the, uh, the, the snake hook actually to really drag that out. So let's go adaptive skin. We'll dynamesh this at 128. There we go. We got really low poly. And make adaptive skin. And now we got this guy. We're going to copy that. And we're going to place this in our scene here. So we'll go ahead and hit paste. Perfect. Now, these are really easy to make. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and just delete the 
the the meshes. I don't really need. I don't really need these. They could just throw one together pretty quickly, so we'll just get rid of those guys. Now we have a couple trees. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and scale this guy down. Now I will be 3D printing this, so the thing to really remember will be uh, how thick or thin something is. And anytime we have something that's very similar to, you know, um, any we have to sorry, lost my train of thought. Um, anytime we have something that's really small, we want to make sure that there's a certain thickness to it. So I'm not gonna want to push this to be any thinner than maybe say his wings or the uh, the fingers on his hand. That's gonna keep things a little bit more uniform. Here. With 3D Print Hub, we do have the ability to kind of use some sort of size reference by like bringing in a cube, setting it there, then sizing that cube. Um, but I would say just kind of set yourself up for success and definitely have things uh, with a more controllable size. Just visually, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be pretty thick. I'll show you when we get closer to the end. There we go. Okay. So actually, let's just solo this out for a second. Let's just hone in on it. And now the brush I'm gonna use, let's see, hold on. There we go. So B, C, and then B for clay buildup. That's the brush I'm really gonna depend on for making my trees. And let's see, let's go to refer uh, preferences. Let's go to where are we? It's interface. Not click. Navigation. Nope. I'm looking for the sticky key. Do they have the sticky key? I thought they did. No, not hotkeys. Where are you at? Mm, I thought they had that there. Oh, there they go. Okay. How is everybody else doing? I click enabled pop-up, which is good. There we go. Use sticky keys. I just glossed over it. Let's go to interface, click sticky keys, because I like this feature a lot where I don't tap on it. So S, that's like one of my main features I use a lot now. There we go. Okay. So when we're sculpting our tree, the thing we really want to make sure is that we take the time to get a decent resolution. We'll go 256 or 264. But we also want to make sure that the 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 flow of the tree makes sense. So when the way something like uh, the way the 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 arm of the tree branches out when the branch <laughs> didn't want to use that pun, but when the, when it branches out, the tree kind of moves with it like the way the skin folds is gonna kind of twist and, and conform to it. So when we're doing something like this, we kind of want to be aware of how that branch is being connected. We don't want to just, we just don't want to just do this. Like we actually want to have some sort of flow to that branch. And the branch branches out. I'm such a noob today. <laughs> they do have sticky, yep, found it. Uh, I was in T-Pose so long that when i came out i was still thinking everything was one sub tool tripping out on my controls oh wow yeah that's crazy oh yeah mad respect for environment rc absolutely i'm actually going to want to go at a higher resolution than this so i'm actually going to go 356 there we go just something a little bit more we go and by all no means am i a you know insane tree sculptor but we're definitely just gonna kind of get the the feel of the how it flows and with clay buildup we can actually get kind of the branch of it 
Like get the bark looking pretty decent. Maybe add a hole. There we go. <laughs> okay. Remember my always have my respect for character artists. We all have respect for each other. I love it. There we go. I definitely want to use the snake hook. So B, S, wait, tell me it's here. There it is, an H, there we go. I was gonna be scared if I didn't see it. There we go. Something like that. We're actually gonna take the snake hook and kind of just edge it a little bit, give it a little bit of curve. And there is masking. Yay for masking. So we're gonna actually tap soften that. I'm gonna move that around. Just like such. Leave him alone! Branch, branch, branch. <laughs> I like that, guys. <laughs> there we go. Right. And one of the things I definitely learned about doing some, like, doing a tree is you really do want there to be consistency with the branches. So, if you're sculpting a tree for the first time, just uh, keep the branches consistent. If they go, if they kind of go out and down a little bit, that's where you want. If they kind of go out and up a little bit, that's what you also want. So, world orientation is crazy too. Okay, so we'll do something like that for now. Let's take this guy. I'm actually, going to subdivide it a little bit. Take the clay build up to B, C, B. It's so nice to have keyboard shortcuts. ZBrush Core Mini did not have that. <laughs> so. Just kind of come out this way and down. Yeah. I don't think I've ever tried to sculpt a real tree. Oh man, you should, it's fun. Trying to keep in mind that this study den just ha has just as much character as a character. There's purpose and story. Environment, environment is a character in itself. Absolutely, yep, absolutely. The thing I learned when I first really started sculpting is everything has an anatomy. Everything has a purpose and a flow. So we just kind of want to stick to that, to that as much as possible. You know, like I'm actually going to use this split right here in the middle to actually be part of the barks that kind of move up this way. And what's cool is this is all asymmetrical. I feel like I wouldn't want to sculpt a tree symmetrically at all. Just gonna subdivide a couple more times. We're only working at 250,000. There we go. So I'm just laying down some groundwork. Get some shape and flow of it. That is really well said. Everything has anatomy, a tree, a creature. It does not matter. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Anytime I get stuck on something, I just type in that thing plus anatomy. You'd be surprised what you get.
And two, just remember, guys, that everything in the beginning is what is known as the Valley of the Suck. It is just a thing that is, you know, it's not going to look good the first time through. Maybe the very first attempt isn't your best. That's okay. Just keep practicing. See what you got. And then... And then use reference. Okay, if we're going to go ahead and mask this section off right here. Boop. Kind of soften that a little bit. I'm actually going to lower the subdivision. Let me kick this one up. Out. And I think these trees are going to be kind of like, like wilted. I don't think I'm going to be putting leaves on this one. I think these will be like dead trees. I actually use nano mesh for all the books in the study. You going to do that for the leaves? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Well, we are in Z brush core. I don't think nano mesh is here, so no. Oh no, Z brush core does not have nano mesh. Yeah. Honestly, guys, I think I'm gonna kick this to dyna mesh. Yeah, let's do that. Let's kick it to Dynamesh. Let's actually delete lower. Let's go to Dynamesh. Let's kick this up at 500. I'll kick it down a lot. That'll give me exactly what I need. There you go, yeah. The reason why is because I actually want to... actually want to make some big changes. So yeah, I change my mind all the time. <laughs> All right, let's get like a knot going. I'm actually gonna want this to kind of flow around a little bit. So let's reshape this. Okay, so I'm crushing the geometry there. So let's go to brush auto masking and turn back face mask on. It's also gonna be really helpful. Yeah, let's kind of turn that that way. There we go. Yeah. This tree actually might be pretty dead, so let's rot it out. I love the fact that it's so different in core. It's neat because you just get to kind of experiment. There we go, yeah. So let's kind of bring that up. I'm making each stroke kind of layered on top of each other, but I'm not trying to smooth it. I'm just gonna dynamesh. Let's come here. Let's have this split right there. So that's going to be a purposeful split in the tree. There we go. Good music mix. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you. Just using pretzel rocks if you guys are really into that. Pretzel rocks is an amazing way to stream music. Here we go. And have these branch out. I just, I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> okay, let's actually lower the intensity just a bit because I don't want to build it up too quickly. There we go. There we go. Let's see if this is starting to at least look like it's supposed to from afar. We still have a lot of work to do with it, but not too bad. Hey, what's going on, Attentive Slug? Dude, welcome in, buddy. Okay, I'm actually going to take this right here. 
kind of reshape it just a bit. Let's actually mask off this component. Soften that up. So I'm going to bring this over like such. There we go. Let's take this section right here. Yeah, that's why we went back into Dynamesh. I want to make sure too, what I'm also looking for is that the silhouette has really good appeal from all angles. So right here, it kind of doesn't, right? So we're going to go ahead and just send that back in home. We're going to rotate this around. Maybe bring this out a bit. There we go. Yeah, ch yeah, check out Pretzel Rocks. I think you'd like it. Because the way with uh, streaming and music is these days, it's it's pretty helpful. Okay, so I'm coming up with the... If you see here how the flow around this branches it's going to be coming out of the tree kind of twisting around almost let's take the damn standard so bds there we go Just come on in with that damn standard. And again, just keep your the flow of it consistent, the strokes up and down. Yeah, Trey wants to branch out. <laughs> Give me a hug. All right, so let's see. What else do we have here? Ooh, we have Trim Dynamic, one of my favorite brushes. Oh my god, guys. I love Trim Dynamic. So we can kind of put this back like that. Come back to the clay buildup. There we go. There we go. Like I said, I have reference that I'm checking too, just to make sure that it's doing everything that I want it to do. There we go. This way it makes sense but it's not overly complicated. Go. Cool. And just for fun too, let's add a couple knots in this tree. So let's actually build up like a little spot right, right here. So I'm actually gonna kinda build up and then come like circles this way. I'm going to dig in just a little bit. There we go. All right. Let's take that damn standard. Let's actually cut in a little bit more detail. Okay. Now I'm going to take that snake hook. I'm actually going to plant this tree right into this base. So let's bring this up a little bit.
I guess this is the opportunity to use all these weird puns. <laughs> There we go. Let's go down like that. Actually, with a snake hook brush, let's make another one. There we go. We can work with that a little bit more. I dig that in. All right, let's take a look at it from afar. There we go. Let's actually use a, there we go. Better, let's use skin shade, I think. No, that's too bright. Just tone it down. There you guys go, all right. Yeah, I think that's working. Bring that up a little bit. I feel like it's broken here just a little bit. So maybe we'll skinny that branch up. Okay, we definitely got to fix this part right here. Let's do that. We'll kind of have this come up and wrap around. Almost like it's twisting on itself. Maybe we'll create that twist. Let's see. See if that works for us. No, that's just me tearing it apart. So yeah, just got to play with it. Just got to see what works, what doesn't work. Okay. Play build up and let's actually come back around this way. Maybe it comes in and inserts there. And then it's actually kind of growing around it a little bit. There we go. There we go. Something like that. So now we have an insertion point where this branch is coming out from here. There we go kind of split there. I don't know if it's just me, but one thing I am noticing about core is that uh, I feel like because it's off center, I'm actually having a little bit of like fighting the viewport. So I'm just going to center it back home for a second. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, there we go. So maybe keep that in mind if you're sculpting just kind of off off center a little bit that it might be might might be a little weird. Let's just sculpt it in center and then go from there. There we go. Alright, let's cut that right in there and dynamesh that. I'm kind of just digging a little bit of a hole there. Almost like a spot that just didn't grow out too well. And we'll come up. And you know what we could do? We can go to Preview AO, which is in ZBrush Core. And we can turn that bad boy up a little bit if we would want. Let's actually kick it up to 35. Lazy Mouse setting in damn standard? Yes, Lazy Mouse in damn standard. If you come up to Stroke... You can adjust. 
lazy mouse right there. You can just turn it on. It's also on your mask lasso, which is really cool. This looks really nice. I'm curious, though, how long have you been doing stuff like this? Um, I've been doing character sculpting for almost five years now. And I just actually started getting into doing more environments because I do toy collectibles and, and freelance for just anybody who wants statue work in general. So, yeah, about five years, but specifically sculpting environments. This is actually my fourth attempt doing a tree. But I'm doing it for this bigger piece, and I'm going to be using these trees as scale for this guy, which is my Cthulhu I'm currently working on. So we have this right there. That's really cool. Oh, thanks, Goof. Goof Goose. I like that name. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah, Lazy Mouse is here, and it is on. You can have it on damn standard for sure. Just go up to Stroke, Lazy Mouse, turn it on, and you're good to go. I think also, too, let me see. Yes, yeah, so if you hit L, that turns on and off Lazy Mouse as well. Okay. Now we get to repeat, but now with this guy right here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just send this back to the home shin, solo it out, hit F on the keyboard, which will take me right back where I need to be. And now we can go ahead and let's subdivide this. And let's not make the same mistake I did earlier. We'll delete lower, go to Dynamesh, and we're just going to Dynamesh it at like 500. Get really decent Dynamesh happening. Actually, not 500. Let's try 360. 360. There we go. There we go. A little bit lower. That works out pretty well. Hello, 3D Moon. Welcome in, welcome in. Welcome in, everybody. If you're new to, uh, or if you're just coming in right now, um, my name's Ian, a.k.a. IR Sculpts, so some people know me. I am a digital sculptor, freelance, work with toys, work with 3D printing, work with statues. And today we're just going over ZBrush Core. So it's not full ZBrush and it's not ZBrush Core Mini, which was free. It's just ZBrush Core, uh, which is about $180 USD. So if you guys would like to pick yourselves up a copy of this, that's where you could do it. Go to pixelogic.com. In fact, I'm gonna drop that too. So you guys can see and compare. But yeah, Core is really, really freaking amazing. So you guys can kind of see what I'm working with. While it's not the full adult version of ZBrush, it is very powerful. Yes. Yes, it is. If you, Yes. So, if you go to ZBrush and you go to Purchase, one-time per, uh, perpetual license for ZBrush Core. Never expires. One-time cost. Yep. And then, then there's ZBrush, which the full version of ZBrush. Oop. You go to pixo.com. I don't want to misquote it. But there are subscriptions, but if you want a perpetual license that never expires, like updates, all that stuff is uh, 8 95 The main difference between ZBrush and ZBrush Core, there's quite a lot of differences. ZBrush Core is mainly meant to like get your feet wet. So there are some uh, features like Z Remesher that, that is in Core, but you don't have the, uh, you actually don't have the full, you know, uh, control that ZBrush Core is, stuff like that. Uh, you In ZBrush Core, you can't make your own brushes, but they provide you pretty much everything you need to get started. Every artist has like five brushes that they use. My five brushes are in ZBrush Core. Like I use the Mass Lasso, I use the Stitch Brush, Trim Dynamics, Smooth, Snake Hook, Clay Build Up, Clay, Damn Standard, like NH Polish. So those are my main brushes and they're all here. Um, but with ZBrush Core, there is limitations. Um, also too, the biggest one is how many poly, uh, poly uh, points or active points you can have. So if you would like a full breakdown of them, I definitely uh, suggest you just go here, check them out, and you can actually get a full comparison. 
but that's what we're using today. And I actually like Core. I think Core is great. Core is how I started while I saved up for full ZBrush, say, three years ago. How many hours do you sculpt a day? Um, because I do it for a job, I sculpt anywhere between six to 10 hours a day. Um, and that's not always client work. Sometimes that's my own personal projects because especially with freelancing, the thing you wanna remember is when you're in between jobs, you're not dedicated to a studio. Um, you basically just kind of have to be on top of it. You gotta hustle. <laughs> so I'm always sculpting, always pushing myself to get better. So, yeah. But when I had a, like, when I was a graphic designer before the pandemic, because um, I was graphic designing and sculpting freelance, I was able to hit, like, it was hard. It, but I would hit, like, three to four hours a day if it wasn't client work. I know, schedules sometimes are, are definitely hard. I'm gonna go ahead and actually get rid of this one. So we're gonna to go to modify topology, delete hidden and close holes. So we can work with a brand new type of tree. I think it's somebody like Shane who said, core is like ZBrush 3.0. Yeah. All right, gotta run, good hanging out. Good hanging out, Chris, thanks for stopping by. Super appreciated, dude. Okay, we're gonna take the snake hook now. I'm going to make this tree just a little different. So I'm going to come here. I'm actually going to just mask this area. Something like that. And we're going to bring this part out like such. And again, we're looking for a peel. So I'm going to kind of move this around just a little bit. Do you know if I get the full ZBrush? Hold on. Do you know if I get the full version of ZBrush, not subscription one? Does that include updates? Yes, it does include updates. I've had ZBrush, full ZBrush for about three years now, and I've been a part of each and every one of those updates. They've never charged me for an update, and I don't think they plan on starting now. And ZBrush Core? has been updated as well. I've had ZBrush Core for almost the full five years, because again, that's how I started, and I was able to update no problem. So yes. That's actually one of the main reasons why I love Pixo. Free updates, they are awesome. Kamara's in the house. What is up, Kamara? Hey! I wish you an amazing day and night. I wish an amazing day and night to you too. Ham! That is a crazy name. I love it. <laughs> I love the amount of A's in that name. Wish you an amazing day and night too, everybody. I lost track of time on my retapo today. Oh yeah. Whoa, there's a motorcycle just flew by my house. I don't know if you guys just heard that. Rip. Let's go ahead and mask that bad boy right there. Soften that. They're also all awesome and super helpful. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Guys, if you're on the fence about ZBrush, please ask your questions. Any way I can try to help, and I will. But if you're wanting to get serious in sculpting, definitely the program to do it. Let's kick this up. Let's move this here, scale this down a little bit. Oh yeah, Dynamesh just has so much freedom, it's awesome. I'm actually going to mask this section off here. Control W gives it a new poly group. Grab that. Flea hidden close holes. I don't know if you guys just saw me go over to the left. I'm so used to having my own custom UI. I'm now on ZBrush. That's where I usually have delete hidden close holes. 
There we go. Now we can just kind of come over and create like a little fun twist, which is awesome. There we go. And I get that twist in a bit. There we go. Damn, your name reminds me of Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> How do I get a job at Pixel Logic? Awesome work, by the way. Thank you so much for the compliment. I really appreciate it. Um, I actually just uh, emailed them and applied. I just, uh, you know, emailed and said I wanted to uh, be a part of the stream team, reached out, and they we just started a conversation, and that led me here. Yeah, my biggest advice, if you guys ever want to work for a company... Just reach out to that company and just say, hey, I want to work for you. See what happens. I've actually gotten a lot of my uh, my freelance start that way. I found a company I really wanted to work for and then said, hey, I really want to do this. Here's my portfolio. And they turn around and either said yes or no. And it can't hurt. If they say no, then it, you're really no further behind than when you applied. But if they say yes, then that's opportunity. Don't be afraid. What kind of tree is this? This is the, uh, I don't know what kind of tree it is. I'm actually just, I gathered a bunch of reference and I'm kind of making just dead wilted trees to place for my base for this Cthulhu for scale and size. I'm actually probably gonna make these smaller than they currently are. So the references I've pulled, I've gathered oak, pine, I think a crown tree and now I'm just kind of like just kind of freestyling it I'm not versed in my tree names <laughs> so have a portfolio ready and if they say no you can try next time right absolutely yeah absolutely have a portfolio ready and then just go for it seriously yep And sometimes, too, I know before the pandemic, like, there was, like, um, you know, I went to Designer Con. I was a part of a company that actually, uh, they hired me to sculpt live during Designer Con in 2019, just before the pandemic. It was really cool because they also just let me free reign um, when I wasn't sculpting at the booth. And so um, I was able to go around and see other companies. So... You know, that, I take that same same advice where I went and I dropped off my portfolio to other companies. I just kind of do that now via email sometimes, you know. Just try to keep it respectful and I just, you know, if I have legitimate interest, I will not be afraid to reach out to you and say, hey, I would love to work with you. I'm going to kind of boost that up a little bit. There we go. Snake cook again. Yeah, the worst is they'll say no, absolutely. Yep, miss 100. <laughs> you miss 100% of the shots you don't attempt, absolutely. I just watched the boat race challenge video on your Discord, amazing. Oh my gosh, isn't that insane, guys? Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that, but yeah. You guys have to just type in boat race challenge on YouTube. Just when you think, you know, I was actually just like thinking about really getting into tuning up my uh, FDM. I don't think my Ender can do it. But, man oh man, if I could tune my FDM Ender to print like that, it would speed up my concepts so much faster. I don't think so. I think it'd break. Those machines are cool, though. That's not working. I'm actually going to take the trim dynamic, so BTD. We're just going to go ahead and kind of trim away at some of this fatty area that I don't like. I'm just kind of getting a nice twist to this. Maybe, looks like there's perfect for a knot right here. 
So let's go ahead and just carve that in. Maybe this is a branch that fell off. Wish they had free copy for students. US dollars can't get very expensive in the 3D world. Well, if you're looking to start sculpting and you don't want to spend a penny, check out ZBrush Core Mini. It's completely free. I covered it last week. It's really, really good. Check that out. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do you think about the Wacom uh, tablet Cintiq? I actually don't have a Cintiq. I've never used a Cintiq, so I have no opinion on it. Uh, the tablet I'm rocking is an XP pen. Uh, it's a 13.3 inch, and it's pretty good. I like it. But I, I don't have an opinion on Cintiqs. I'd say just... You know, if you're looking to get in a tablet, which you should have a tablet for ZBrush, highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, you can go with something very simple and affordable. You don't have to spend a fortune. Just get something that's like 30, 40 bucks. How much does someone starting as a ZBrush modeler start at? Uh, it depends, you know. Uh, that question's a little... That, that, that question's a little bit dependent on your area, where you're at, and who's hiring what for what job purpose. ZBrush has so many different uh, uses within the 3D modeling world, from character creation to high-risk sculpting to blend shapes creations. Um, and then it's not just in games and movies, but it's also toys, props. So ZBrush can... So to just be a ZBrush modeler... Um, yeah, it's it's job dependent and where you're at, so. Yeah, there's no real set pay for like you can't just walk into a company and say, hey, I'm a ZBrush modeler, and they're say, Great, here's thirty five thousand a year. Like, it's not like that. It's it like anything else, ZBrush is a tool in which you can use to get the job done. Yeah. XP pen, nice. <laughs> XP gang price. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, I get the Cintiq 16. Oh, one one day when I get money. <laughs> I love my I love my tablet. It's pretty cool. I do want to upgrade it one day, that's for sure. Here we go. Hey, what are the freelance websites you use to find your clients? Actually, I, um, a lot of times, honestly, a lot of times it is through email correspondent because I also do private clients. I don't just do studios. So I'll get hit, I'll get emails a lot. Um, like I was saying earlier, I will apply to studios and see if they're hiring for freelance. Um, I also go to ArtStation. ArtStation has a lot of jobs, posts all the time. So you can go there and find, see what's going on. It's a lot of legwork and a lot of self-promotion. So I kind of use a lot of different sites, not just one in particular. And believe it or not, I've gotten hired directly from Twitter. I've had Twitter DMs come straight from companies and say, hey, we found you. We want to talk. Okay, great. Actually, my fir uh, one of my let's see, my my one of the first NDAs I signed this year actually came from a DM post on um, on Instagram. I also worked with a couple jewelry stores here in Los Angeles. That was pretty cool. Like I say, when you're freelancing, you're kind of always on the hunt, and when you're not working, your portfolio building. Yeah, I'm renting Core. Would you suggest I buy it, or would you su uh, suggest or just buy the full version when ready? Based on your, based on how I did it, and based on your budget, I highly recommend buying a full license because you'll save your money. You'll save money in the in the in the long term. Yes, it's it is a big upfront cost, um, not as big as some other programs in the world, but. For what you get with all the updates, I find it more affordable for me. 
uh, to buy the full license when you can afford it. Um, the subscription is great, but having a subscription all the time, over time, if you were sculpting for 10 years, that might be a little bit expensive where you could just own the license full on. So I always recommend going full full license. Yeah, 3D modeling is super high demand everywhere, but if you don't get it out there, you'll never see it. Absolutely, yeah. Oh yeah, your portfolio is very important. At, yeah, it, it comes down to portfolio. Oh, I need to save. <laughs> I just realized I hadn't saved. Um, yeah, it's, you know, the biggest advice I can give you with your guys' portfolio, and if you would like to see mine, um, please pop in. Uh, here's the link to my stuff and all the other good stuff I have, including my YouTube discords and stuff if you'd like to join. But uh, the, the biggest tip I give with portfolios is that treat your portfolio like a living, breathing item, like it's a living, breathing entity. It's an extension of you, right? So when you create something that's really amazing, put it in there. When you create something that's like kind of mediocre compared to the last thing you put in there and see if it if it is better or does if it shows something new and always just kind of evolve your portfolio based on what you've learned and what you can what you can do never put anything in there that like you're not sure of so if you can't do that thing consistently i would say don't put that in your portfolio but always just present your best be very critical of what you put in there and just be honest with it and everything else everything else that kind of works you know will come together actually mask this area right there so I'm actually gonna kind of stretch that that way just a bit all right let's go ahead and place this now where we want it we'll be here something like that kind of scale that I mean we're gonna stretch it a little bit okay getting in some fun little territories now so i'm going to go ahead and hit Control shift d which will duplicate i'm going to hide my cthulhu for a second and his wings and now i'm going to and that part right there now i'm going to start placing these uh these trees a little bit more randomly and then we'll give them like we'll make kind of like a dirty surface like a dirt surface do i do any portfolio reviews on your streams uh, not at this time. I'm currently uh, in the works of building a ZBrush 101 course that I'm hoping to get released uh, sometime mid-year. And then I'll, I'll definitely start offering that. But not at this time, no. However, if you are interested in what I think of your piece or if you would like me to critique a piece, um, then... Feel free to stop by my own streams because I don't mind giving advice there, but I haven't started doing that here yet. Also, too, if you join my Discord, you could pop in, drop something, ask for help. There are tons of artists in there as well who are willing to help out and kind of kind of give some guidance and stuff. So, as do I. So you guys can kind of see now, like, this is kind of the scale I'm going for. Now he's going to be, like, I think he's going to be, like, six to eight inches tall in total in real world size. But I think that's going to start setting us up for success. And let's actually add some variety. Okay. So what we're going to do as well is we are going to go down to... Poly groups and hit auto groups, which is really helpful. Grab this guy, pass that off. Stretch this one up a little bit. There we go. Push this one back. Heck yeah, they are super helpful and all awesome. Yes. Lewis says, Ian, if you had to distribute leaves along those branches, what would be the best solution for not demanding everything from the PC memory? Is there a tool for distributing sheets like there in the venue? Um, in ZBrush Core, unfortunately, you're going to have to kind of copy and paste. Um, I would say sculpt one leaf and do it. 
But if I were to do this in full ZBrush, I would use something like Nano Mesh um, or Creative Brush and then just paint them on. Uh, the other approach I would actually take, because I do things for 3D printing, I'd actually take a sphere and kind of glob out a shape of how the tree leaves would be branching. And then I would go ahead and use an IMM brush or use Nano Mesh to then produce a bunch of leaves, position them how I want them, so that way it's watertight, but it still has that texture. Uh, I bought full license in 2018 and was the best investment I've made in a long time. I'm a hobbyist and don't really use it for making money though. Okay, that's okay, but you own it. <laughs> now let's see. Is there a way to do hair in ZBrush that doesn't create extra steps in retopology? Uh, well, ZBrush 0.3, just the full ZBrush, just released a, I think it's, I want to say it's brush hair curves. And now you can use hair, now you can do hair cards. Uh, you can do hair cards in ZBrush now. So if you're looking for hair cards, but if you're, if you're looking for like, the only other way I would do it that I'm aware of would be using um, uh, fiber mesh. But no, then yeah, then all the extra steps would be there. You could probably use fiber mesh to create some star hair cards as well. But now they have like a hairbrush curve in there. I'm actually popping over to pull that. I want to get the right brush name. I haven't played with it 100%, but I know it's there and it's really, really cool. Um, which is awesome. Yeah, flat curve and I'm sorry, curve flat and curve flat snaps. Brushes have been added um, and they can be used for hair cards for games and creating. So if you're looking to do that in ZBrush, you can check that out. Um, I'm probably going to be sculpting, probably go with like a 1 8 scale. Nothing too crazy. Oh, speaking of, of scale and stuff, you guys want to see the Sub-Zero I sculpted? I printed them out. I think I showed you guys that Sub-Zero my first stream. And I cut them a couple streams ago. I'd love to show you guys. Yeah, check this out. Here we go. Let's go full screen. We're going to zoom in. Here he is. Check this guy out. So I printed him. I'm going to be releasing him soon. Let's get focus. Hold on. There we go. Okay. I'll be releasing him soon. But here he is. So the base is uh, PLA. And then he's full resin, and this is what we cut out a couple streams ago. And I just put like a, a little gray primer on him, just to make him pop those details. So yeah, I think I want to do a Scorpion next. <laughs> I think that would be pretty awesome. So yeah, this, this came out really, really well. Pretty proud of that one. <laughs> Jake, for what's happening? Oh yeah, dope. Uh, bought an academic license back in 2019 because it was cheap and didn't have to pay. Didn't want to have to pay more. Uh, it was good enough starting. Oh, that's a bummer, dude. So Stoic Low came out super sharp. It did, yeah. I'm actually really impressed with how that came out, especially for FDM. That texture uh, print came out well. Yes, it, believe it or not, that texture was just micro poly. That's all that texture was, just micro poly, and then it printed really well with 0 0.05 millimeter for resin. Thanks, guys. So yeah, so that's what we cut a couple weeks ago. And it came out really well. I'm really excited. All right. When making a 3D model for 3D printer, should we pay attention to the number of polygons? No. No. Um... When you're exporting it, try to decimate it as low as you can get it. But don't you don't have to pay attention to that. I mean, don't go super extreme. But the the largest model I've printed without decimation was like a million. But you want to kind of bring it down because 
Um, slicers, uh, they tend to freak out when you throw a high model in there. So if you if you can decimate it to anywhere between 250,000 to half a mil, that's perfect per subtool. But um, when you're sculpting, don't worry about how many poly groups you have. You know, if you need to have 20 million to sculpt in high detail because you're going full high res and you're exaggerating everything and you're putting like, you know, uh, skin wrinkles and pores and stuff and that's, you know, and you're doing like a big piece, that's what you need, that's what you need. Um, but, you know, also too, just note that you lose about 10 to 15% in total uh, amount of detail when you print something out in even resin because of post-processing cleanup and also too the slicer isn't going to catch everything so if you're printing something small like a miniature have big bold details low poly you know you don't have to go too crazy but if you're printing a bust or even a high res character then you know you can kick it up a bit i had trouble in core with that because sometimes lost too much detail when decimating it yeah that 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 can happen as well that's why I said, try to take it as low as you can. Um, I think, I know in full ZBrush, you can actually use the mask and kind of protect some areas that you decimate. So if you were to decimate with the mask feature, in fact, I'm really curious. Let's try this. I wanna see if Core can do it as well. But in ZBrush, you can mask off a section of detail. And when you hit decimation, it's actually going to account for that and try to preserve that amount of detail as much as possible so for example let's see here real quick decimation master right okay so we just have set features here but let's say i kick this up pretty high it's called three point million right and i'm gonna just real quickly sculpt some detail here right some really crappy details <laughs> all right so and now if I mask the section off right here, let's say like that, let's see if it works in here. But in ZBrush Core, in ZBrush Regular, you'd be able to do that. If we hit this, what the mask feature would do is actually protect that and decimate the rest of it normally and then try to preserve as much detail within that mask as possible. Uh, let's see what happens. Very informative, thank you. You're absolutely welcome. You can also do that in Core Perfect, so yeah. But you you know, um, you can take it down too far and decimation can break if there's just not enough information to support it. So try to, try to keep it as low as you can for as long as you can. And then just add detail where you really need it. That's where Sculptress Pro comes in and then you know, you can kind of sculpt in more detail right where you need it. And then, then decimate. You can even, you know, before you start adding a lot of detail, you can even just decimate and then go to Sculptress Pro and start adding your detail that way too. That's another approach. I sculpt for parts for miniatures and learning to exaggerate I find quite hard. It is very hard, yeah. Okay, so it's reordering. It's, it's thinking. It's thinking, Lincoln. Okay, so here we go. So th that's exactly what it did. So it preserved as much detail as it could with that mass feature, and then everything else just kind of got generically, got generically put, so. I would recommend doing that for faces in general. Yeah, let's back this up. Okay, there we go. There we go. Let's save it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, speaking of detailing, let's actually start creating a little bit of some ground. So, see here how we have this kind of... You have this geometry. It's, you know, it's a basic sphere I just crushed down. What I'm going to do is actually... Squish this a little bit more. Add this here. Kind of bring this up to his feet just a bit. There we go. Now I'm actually going to subdivide a few times so I get it kind of smooth. 
I'm actually going to delete lower. And then I'm going to dynamatch it. Turn off blur. Actually, no, blur two can stay. Let's go 250. There we go. Just want enough, and then I'm going to start doing the... I'm going to make like a just a kind of rough dirt ground that we'll work with. So let's go BST for standard brush. I'm actually going to use spray, and let's pick an alpha. Something like that. That is cool. And can it somehow create conflict during 3D printing when you decimate it in general? Let's keep some parts masked to save high poly for details, or is it totally safe? No, it's totally safe. As long as your model is watertight to begin with, that there are no holes. Um, so, you know, just make sure before you run that process, go to modify topology and hit close holes. Just make sure that everything is nice and tight. There's no accidental holes there. And then go ahead and do the decimation process and that should save you. So there shouldn't be any real issues. If you are running into issues where you are, you're finding out that you have multiple sub tools merged together, but they're not actually welded together, then you might run into an issue. So I recommend at that point, merging those sub tools, dyne meshing them together, closing holes, then run your decimation. And that should also help you out. Okay, I'm actually going to change this to a different matte cap, like matte cap gray, just because I need to see the ground. There we go. And let's actually kick up just a little bit higher. Let's go Dynamesh 360. There we go. Let's actually lower this a little bit. We're just going to kind of start sculpting in the ground a little bit. Might add some rocks and boulders too. I want this to be nice and fun, but also want this to be kind of muddy. Hey, Talden, how you doing? That was great, thanks. Yes, I've had that weld problem before, yeah. Is it necessary to make clean topology for 3D printing? No, it is not, no. There's no need to spend time retopologizing. There's no need to, you know, bake from low res to high res. When you're 3D printing, you're sculpting solely high res. So you get it as detailed as you can, as, you know, and then however clean your model is, it's just dependent on your style and technique that you use. You know, I like subdividing because it holds detail better. So I typically have a clean approach, but I've also made some game characters as well. So some of that is habit, but there's no need to freak out about your topology whatsoever. Okay. I'm actually going to shrink this base down. go and this guy won't be done today there's still so much i want to do to him so we'll be continuing him next week as well i know it's only 6 30 like i've just started but um just so you guys are aware i don't plan on finishing him today but we can finish him next week which will be fun there we go Doing well, just had dinner and all. Nice, nice, nice. I'm actually going to go ahead and clip this down. Like that. Solo. So we're going to go ahead, modify topology, delete and close holes. You see me do that a lot. Oh, okay. We're going to back this up a little bit because I just broke the bottom surface. Let's put back face mask on. I would actually, in ZBrush regular, I would actually use the uh, clip curve to just fix that. Unfortunately, I don't have that here. So 
I'm just gonna back that up, hit back face. It's not like it, I did a whole lot. I just, yeah, that's totally fine. We'll just go ahead and just start. Back face preserves any back part of your, of your model, so you're not destroying it accidentally, which I was doing, so. Uh, thank you for your answers. Have a nice day. No, thank you. No problem. What are you going to do with, uh, going to do to him? I don't know yet. We're going to print him for sure. That's for sure. Let's scale this up and I'll scale this down like such. There we go. This guy was cool. Uh, when you clipped, how did you reposition? Oh, when I clipped, how did I reposition? Um, okay. So I probably did it really fast. But let's go back to the tree for a second. I mean, so when I clipped like this here, and then I came here real quick, I just hit F. That pushes you really closely to your model as quick as possible. I do that a lot. So I'll hit F, they'll zoom into your subtool, hit F again, zooms back out to the full size. Also, hi, Slime Jam, how you doing? All right, let's start detailing a little bit more of him because right now I feel like he's just kind of missing so much. There we go. Drop that in. All right. Yeah, he's missing a little. He's missing a lot, which is okay. Also, too, when you hold up the gizmo and you tap. Uh, alt in this little like uh, location icon that snaps straight to that part and then you can move that over so holding alt will do that especially if you have multiple ones if you have multiple stuff and you tap hold shift and control and tap that'll send your gizmo straight there hold alt while you reset or reposition your gizmo as well that helps out there we go Okay, let's start detailing this guy up a little bit more. First things first, though, he needs nails. I have not given him nails yet, which is just too bad. So let's give him some nails. He's pretty sad. He can't open up anything or scratch himself. So so let's go ahead and insert a sphere. And we're just going to shrink that down pretty far. Okay. I'm going to stretch this up. There we go. Now, a really cool trick that I love to do, especially for long fingernails, is hit Y and then drag out and hold shift and position that completely over. So you have something like this. Then hover over this middle, hold Alt and actually start bending this. And that's going to help you so much. Just like that. Hit Y again, put this in the middle. And of course too, we have some options here. So I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to use bend arc. Is that what I want to do? Let's see here. What do I want to do? No, I want to do the def former soft. Yeah. I want that section. Mask that off. I'll do that again. Okay, great. You can also use the soft deformer. There we go. That should work out. Yeah, I like that. That works. Go ahead and just accept the soft deformer, and we are good to go. I'm also going to squeeze it in just a little bit. How big will this 3D print be? This 3D print will probably be... It will, probably no bigger than a 1 8 scale. Probably no bigger than that. Originally, I was keeping in mind between 6 to 8 inches. That's usually where I, where I factor in a lot of my stuff. So The trees wouldn't even print very well if it was <laughs> like a miniature. I thought a Cthulhu was a sea creature. 
What's he doing on <laughs> in a forest? Cthulhu is an everything creature. He's a god. All right. Okay. We're going to make one nail. So we're going to just go ahead and subdivide this a little bit. Take the clay build up. There we go. And I'm just going to add some pretty basic texture. Start small and then kind of just do this. So it's just kind of gross. I can't even imagine how big a Cthulhu would be if I actually met one. Wait, you know what I mean? Like. It's more of like a fear-based creature. There we go. So we're going to go something like that. And then let's take Trim Dynamic. So I'm actually going to kind of do a relaxed smooth, but not too aggressive. And start trimming just underneath his nail. Just a little bit, right where it's going to pop out. And then I want the rest to be there. And then they have a pinch brush, which is amazing because I use it a lot. So I'm just going to kind of pinch down the middle a little bit. Actually, it's not giving me the result I want. That's okay. Well, then what I'll do is I'll actually just right down the middle. Soften that a lot. Just kind of lift that up just a bit. Throw that in. Something like that. Back that up. It's giving it a little bit more like funkiness to it. Just raising that up a bit. <laughs> Hello, I'm Cthulhu. What's your name? Yeah. Well, there is that scene from a movie, Miss. Oh, yes, yes. If you actually met one, you would immediately go mad. See? Exactly. So when I tell you people that, you know, when I tell everybody I'm crazy, I'm like, see? You guys, I'm insane. <laughs> it's because I met a Cthulhu! Oh. Alright, there's our nail. And I think it looks pretty gross. What do you guys think? Looks pretty gross? So we're going to gonna turn off Symmetry, and we're going to copy this. Let's actually rename it. Let's call this nail. Oh, yeah. Because fingernails are not actually flat. Exactly, no. Fingernails are very much curved. Yep. All right, there we go. So we're going to take this, and we're actually going to be placing it right on top of his finger and thumbs and stuff. And then we'll embed it, and then we'll merge them together. So we're going to do quite a bit here. We'll scale this down and kind of set this on top. This also helps us give good finger direction, which is really important when you're trying to like showcase where your fingers are going. It's okay. We're all mad here, <laughs> right? There we go. We're just going to place these. I'm not going to sit here and detail the fingers just yet. We're just going to place the one. Now I'm going to hold control. Nope, I can't do that because it's subdivided. Which is totally fine. So I'm actually going to delete lower so I can hold control. I just want to copy. There we go. Now let's turn off the, the trees and such so we can get underneath. And let's place this this way. There we go. There we go. All right. Just like such. There we go. Let's just start placing. There we go. Kind of rotate that around. I think that's pretty good. 
Again, we'll fix the finger. Control drag. There we go. Kind of move that that way just a little bit. Hold control, drag out the next fingernail. Just like such. Getting position is kind of interesting. Rotate. There we go. Kind of press that in. All right, just like such. All right, let's hit F, let's back it up a little bit. So I'm actually gonna hit solo for a second and we're gonna go to auto groups. There we go. Just super dynamesh and tight geometry so you can't really see the color and that's okay. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that control shift D. I'm actually going to bring this on this other side. Now I'm going to hit mirror and weld. So that's going to actually make a duplicate of the one hand and mirror and weld it to the other side. So I actually want this set here. So I'm actually going to take this set and delete hidden. Hold Alt, pop that over, and bring this this way. Now, my fingers are posed already, because I posed them shortly after I brought it over. But what I can do is then kind of line this up as best as we can. Pull on polygroups. There we go. Control shift tap. That's gonna actually just with your gizmo out, that actually take one polygroup and mask the rest. Sorry, I didn't want to sneeze. <laughs> Good day from Oz. Hello, Peter Rose. Hello, hello. Right. And now we're gonna just place these the rest of the way. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> I almost didn't catch it. I was like, oh my god, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> my season my sneezes actually surprised me. I'm not even joking. There we go. Okay. Hello, Next Nox. Hello. All right, control shift tap right there. And MJ, hello MJ Sculpts, welcome in, hello, hello. What are we dabbling in today? I am working on that Cthulhu that I was working on with Kamara earlier in the week. I'm actually working in ZBrush Core though. Really pushing. Uh, I keep at, I keep hitting the wrong button with my tablet. Changing color on the fly. But yeah. Okay. Positioning these fingernails. These little fingies right there. There we go. And back that up. All right. Control Shift Tap. We'll bring this in here. Is there a way to center rotation of the camera based on one particular point of the model? In ZBrush Core, for some reason, it's actually not pivoting with the geometry. I mean, with the subtool, it's actually pivoting with the center of the world. And I'm not sure. I was actually going to be reaching out to Pixo and, and maybe seeing if I'm doing, if I'm doing it wrong. 
But that is what we're in. We're in ZBrush Core. Let me see something. I'm actually going to kind of see if I can Gizmo 3D. Reset Gizmo. Tap to exit Gizmo mode. Nope. No. So I'm going to actually ask because I don't know. I usually don't play in Core. It's usually once you go full ZBrush, you don't go back. Uh, Zebra's core does have a local symmetry. Uh, sorry, it has local symmetry. Local transform. Transform un under. That's a good question. Mm, nope. Just rotate X, Y, and axis. Local. Oh, it does. Wait, there it is. Maybe that's what it is. It is. MJ skulls for the win. There you go, dude. Oh my gosh. And that's how often I turn it on. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yep. Shout out to MJ Scopes. There we go. There we go. You're you're a winner. Yeah, yeah thanks. MJ, Nathan, thank you guys. Saved our life seriously, yeah. <laughs> See, that is the that is the funny side too. Because I haven't been in this for so long, I like I'm still kind of like moving around with the UI a little bit. So yeah, no, absolutely. See, all that stuff is set in normal ZBrush. Cuz yeah, I said and forget it. There we go. All right. All right, this is what we got so far. Let's go ahead and hit save. <laughs> See, guys, I can learn from you as much as you guys can learn from me. So thank you. I drove you nuts a while of time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. It's right here, too. Oh, my gosh. It's right there, too. All right. Let's start detailing this guy. How would you do stylized flames for 3D printing? Whew, that is a great question. Um, Honestly, snake hook it. Like, seriously. Like, that's what I would do. Um, Really watch your, you know... For stylization, it's important to to make sure you get the nice sharp edges where you need them to exaggerate the piece. But I would actually, I would actually take like let's see, let's go to make poly mesh 3D insert. Maybe just take like let's say you wanted a ball of fire, right? Let's take a sphere. Just turn this guy off. Of course, get some reference and stuff like that. But take your get uh, take your snake hook. So B. S H and just grab a piece and start really just like you know bringing the flames up a little bit maybe dynamesh it for a little bit just to get some nice cleanup so let's hit uh, dynamesh for a second all right smooth that out really kind of build that up a little bit this is really fast but then use the pinch brush to come in and start making some harder edges and just work on how the flame movement is get some nice movement going but i would use the snake hook and just start pulling stuff out so. oops really big like that there you go you know just kind of just kind of look at the anatomy of how flames are but you could start getting something really quickly really exaggerative pretty pretty fast don't turn on dynamic smoothing. But yeah, I would th that's how I would start it. And then just kind of like I said, pinch the area a little bit. Give yourself something. And look at some really cool references. That would that would be my approach. Okay. 
Let's start detailing this guy. Do I have subdivisions on? I do not. I have dynamic subdivisions on. So let's actually apply those. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, snake hook with a Q curve turn is really sweet. Absolutely, yep. Anatomy of the Flame, brand new name. <laughs> and that rhymed, I love it. All right. Start getting these eyes locked in. go and when you're doing eyes you want to make sure that you actually have um a little bit of a lip on that lower eyelid let's go up a little bit go Something like such. And yep, we are sculpting asymmetrically, guys. That nice little eyelid right in there. Smooth that down. There we go. Eyelids have nice flat planes right there. So we want to make sure take the trim dynamic even helps exaggerate that just a bit. Smooth that edge down. Maybe use the pinch brush. Actually, no, I'm going to use the damn standard brush. There we go. That's better. Just like that. And we're going to come in like such. Hey, what's going on, Matthew? Uh, I'm getting some serious Mission Impossible vibes from this track. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you prefer to sculpt symmetrically, then pose after? Uh, it depends on the project. I try to... I more sculpt, I'd say, like 60% symmetrically. Um, because I do mostly statue work, I feel that it's easier for me to pose and get the feel of the pose uh, when I start sculpting asymmetrically. But if I'm doing, um, you know, but if I'm doing something that's going to get retopologized, then I will take it as far as I can, uh, almost all the way to finish. It just depends on the project for me. But typically, uh, I will sculpt asymmetrically about 40% of my projects. It just really helps me kind of lock in the, the feel of it. Get expression and appeal. quite like the no nose <laughs> yeah he has no nose no nosy speaking of nose really start adding in some detail here I think too I need to Locals turned on, okay. There we go. There we go. Let's take the damn standard. I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn on. Let's go to stroke, lazy mouse. And we're gonna kick that up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, maybe like that. Perfect. And we'll just come in here. There we go. Start creating some of this. Some of that eye. That eyelid right there. Nose, hair the size of the tree branch, <laughs> right? 
Just have a tree coming out of his nostrils. There we go. Actually gonna mask that part off right there. We're just getting into some uh, some more details and layering now. And if you're wondering, there are no layers, no layers over here either. So if you wanted to try to do blend shapes, that would be a little hard. This is a little ear hole. Let's actually come down here. Let's grab alpha six. One of my favorite alphas, by the way, if you're trying to like use clay buildup, but you want, you don't want such a harsh line. There we go. Smooth that on top a little bit. Everything. <laughs> I won't be doing any comparisons between ZBrush and Blender. This is a Pixo stream, so we're going to keep it on ZBrush related, but there's ZBrush can do a lot of things. Adult ZBrush is amazing. Also, now I am curious. Let's go to brush. Yes, they have Smooth Stronger, one of my favorite brushes. Cool. So if you go to the light box by hitting the comma and go up to brush, Smooth Stronger is amazing. Okay, great. There we go. We're gonna end up merging that together. Heck yeah, I folds, oh yeah. Is there? No. Okay. There we go. And the thing to remember too, guys, if you're doing characters and you're doing eyes, it's important to remember that the lower eyelid doesn't blink. It's the top eyelid. At least in the human anatomy. And because I'm basing this creature, because we usually see with eyes that are reminiscent of human anatomy, that is how we're going to be keeping them. So we want to make sure that the, the lower eyelids actually wouldn't look like they blink. Let's give a little bit of a section here where there would be a little bit of fat tissue. There we go. All right. Okay, I'm now going to use the standard brush to actually bring out some pretty interesting textures. And then we're going to emphasize some things with the damn standard. Could you give him another set of eyelids, Men in Black style? <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I could probably like give him the cross section ones. Ooh, that would be interesting. You know what? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. I love where your head's at. Okay. How long have I been a professional artist? Uh, I've been a professional artist for two and a half years. Um, the very first time I got paid for anything was about two and a half years ago. And it was really cool because it was just somebody who said, hey, I really need this thing. Um, in fact, it was a Cheshire cat. Somebody wanted a Cheshire cat pendant and they came to me and they paid me 50 bucks, um, which I didn't know how to <laughs> didn't really know how to like price things out. And so I said, yeah, 50 bucks, no problem. Took me a couple days. I did it. As soon as you accept money for what you do, you are a professional, right? That's when I decided to start marketing myself and start pushing myself 
and get more work. So yeah, about two and a half years ago. Super crazy to think about, but really, really cool. Okay, what I'm going to do, because we're gonna give them the kind of like, uh, kind of side eyes, a side eye. I'm gonna go ahead and actually hit Control Shift D on this eye, and I'm gonna solo this out after I mask actually. Oh, technically I'm a professional then, but I'm really hot as Yeah. How much would you have asked in hindsight? Um, for the amount of work I did, I probably would have asked for about 250 to 300 bucks a day. And that would have taken me a day to do today. Okay, what took me two to three days back then takes me like six hours to a day now, which is also interesting. But yeah, that's actually a really good, a really good conversation piece in my professional opinion and personal opinion as well. As soon as you accept money to do your job, you are a professional. You got paid to do something. Now, how you decide to move forward is completely up to you, of course. But accepting money to do to do a job, that's you know, that's the definition of of being professional. <laughs> Can you give us a full view of the creature? Absolutely. Here he is. Uh, when did you start learning to sculpt? I started learning to sculpt about five years ago. Yeah, I have a little bit of 2D background and I have hard surface 3D background for the aerospace industry. My 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 journey as an artist, I've always kind of ebbed and flowed, but about five years ago is when I decided to get serious about sculpting, when I found sculpting and found it and fell in love with it. Um, that's when I also found ZBrush. But to make a long story short, I was doing uh, CNC programming and design for aerospace for about 12 years and then an additional two, three years for a fountain company. I then got out of that and decided to pursue sculpting. So I took all of my CNC programming knowledge and 3D printing knowledge I learned there and actually brought it on over to my artistry here. Uh, a friend wanted me to design a custom fuel cap for his car and print it for him. Yeah, that's how it starts. Paid you 20 pounds. Yeah, that's how it starts. Seriously, at the end of the day, that's where it starts. That's where it's at. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get funky here. Actually, this masking is a little soft. It's kind of oomph, right? So let's actually merge that. Let's actually go up in subdivision. I want a clean eyelid. There we go. Let's try this again. Let's turn that one off. Let's grab that right there. Boop. By the way, I love your guys' ideas, and it's fun to work off of them. Yeah, very cool. I like that. Yeah. What tips? Uh, what tips do you? Uh, what tips do I? What do I give for beginners? For beginner artists, or per, or beginning in and. and uh beginning as a professional to be honest that's the same tip i'm just kind of curious on where you're at um the same tip is enjoy your art journey and never stop learning and don't be 
don't be too hard on yourself on where you find yourself and compare it to other people. Don't even compare your art to other people. Use your inspiration that you find in other artists um, to just motivate you, to help to help you kind of achieve your goals and your dreams. But at the end of the day, never stop learning, keep pushing, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. It actually took me a while. Like I was really nervous the first time I posted anything and then I didn't post anything for a long time. And it's okay to share your work. It's also okay to not have all your work shared. You can, you know, you can do stuff for each that's just you. Okay, we'll work, we'll work on that a little bit more. But yeah. Always want to grow. I guess that's the biggest tip. I want to be an artist professionally. I just haven't been getting the time in and I'm nervous. I'm 27. I am 37. And I started five years ago learning. And about two and a half years ago, was I took my first job. You can do it. Hands down, you can do it. Um, yeah, I was in aerospace. Uh, so I worked, I basically made nuts and bolts for airplanes. Mainly commercial airplanes, some military stuff. Yeah. The new extrude brushes make this easy and full brush. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I think they're coming up as normal human eyes. They are currently, yeah, I'm going to have to like do something with that. I was not an engineer. I was a machinist programmer and uh, and what we call lead man. So basically I ran a team of five people. Um, I programmed and I also operated and, and run CNC lathes and mills. And then later that's how I was introduced to 3D printing as well. Um, was because they started taking up 3D printing for prototyping certain things. Yeah, I'm not really sure if I like these eyes right now. So I'm going to kind of abandon ship for a second. And I'll maybe look up some quick references on that. We'll come back to that idea. Yeah. So what do you mean keeping 3D and printing in mind? What do you need to pay attention to? Great question. I'm glad you asked. So when you're 3D printing anything, the things that you want to keep in mind are mainly is how big your project's going to be, but also to any overhangs or undercuts, things that you're going to have to actually add support. If you wanted to design something that is considered, quote, FDM safe, um, that means you can print it on an FDM printer without any supports whatsoever. With resin, you can get away with a lot more, but the things you really need to keep in mind and remember is how you merge things together, how you're going to want to split something up, and also to how are you going to make it so that it is feasible to be printed. So there's a lot of little aspects and for the most part, you can kind of, you kind of get used to just designing your, your sculpts with the intent that they'll be printed. And then you'll keep those things in mind like wall thicknesses. If you decide to shell inside a ZBrush or if you don't want to create a shell and you actually want to just have it a solid and let the slicer do it. So it's all about how you approach the sculpture. Also, too, you can't just print anything that's super thin. So with that wall thickness in mind, for example, here I'm actually applying scale of the trees to kind of give you a bigger world sense of how big this creature is. But I can't just make tiny little trees and then expect to print them. I'm actually going to have to make sure that they work functionally. So a lot of that comes into scaling. A lot of that comes into uh, size prep. And then, of course, to how do I want to print it? Do I want to print it with FDM in mind? Do I want to print it with resin? If I print it in resin, for the most part, like I said, you can get away with a lot. And you could just kind of just support it. But if you're going to be doing FDM, it's a little bit harder to approach. So there are fundamental issues that you want to pay attention to, which do happen more towards the end of the process. But if you have, if you're aware of them or you have them in the back of your mind, then as you're sculpting and you're kind of positioning things, you could tell if it's going to work or if it's going to need to be cut or keyed. So hopefully that makes sense. If you ever try to learn another language, 
Yes. Currently trying to learn Japanese. Not fully dedicated to it because I'm busy, but trying to learn a little bit each day. Trying. <laughs> yeah. Not leaving any spaces on the inside. Resin prints without vents anyway. Yet. Yeah. Making sure it's watertight, that it's functional. Yeah, there's a lot of little things. A lot of technical things to keep in mind. Um, actually, because I've always wanted to learn Japanese. Um, when I was in high school... Um, yeah, I was in... I love anime. I'm into anime. That's helpful as well. Although anime Japanese is not real Japanese. It's exaggerated Japanese. So people in Japan don't speak the way you hear it in anime. Kind of like it's because voice acting. Um, but... Um, I had a good friend in high school who was Japanese, and I wish I learned then. But I've always wanted to go to the... I've always wanted to go to Japan. It's always just fascinated me culturally. So... I thought it'd be kind of cool to actually just... To learn it, to have a second language under my belt. But then also to just... You know... I've just always had interest there. Yeah, I'm just started thinking with how big he is, the force of the winds just from and breathing through the massive nose, sucking up clouds, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Another planet. Yeah. The kind that will help you is really relative boring because for, it's for little kids. Yeah. Let me know if that made sense on my explanation, by the way, of talking about uh, keeping 3D printing in mind. So I love talking about the process. And it's really big and it's up and coming these days. And a lot of companies are prototyping this way. So if you guys do have questions about that step, please ask. No worries. Uh, currently, at this time, I'm not working for a toy company. At this time, I'm actually working for a purse company, believe it or not. Uh, Coach.com. They have some fun projects, but they're getting into some... Looks like it's going to be some really fun stuff that's going to be involved with uh, 3D printing and stuff. So, be really cool, but NDAs, of course, can't really... Uh, <laughs> fortunately, can't really talk about the current process. But it's going to be fun. Yeah, super clear. Thanks for the spawn. Not a problem. Yeah. It's... I know, so it, it was definitely a very interesting uh, uh, take, but... I love it. I think 3D printing is coming very, very far these days. Gonna see a lot more of it. All right. So the other thing on asymmetrical sculpting, I really feel like it brings a lot of character to it as well. That's partly too why I do it a lot. What time is it? Seven seventeen already. Time is flying. So my takes on core, if you guys are interested, it's pretty interesting. I really like, I really do like actually not having so much at the table, but in the beginning it did feel a little limiting, but I, I can guarantee it's because I'm so used to ZBrush, but man, you can do a lot. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Amara. Sorry, I'm bad with names, so I don't definitely I definitely don't want to butcher any. Okay. Alright, let's start getting some skin scaling and texturing happening here. I think it's really gonna bring 
a lot to the table. Go. I said that right. There we go. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to do a light relax smooth. So hold shift. And then as you start smoothing, let go of shift. And that gives you a relaxing smooth. So you don't like wipe away all the details. It kind of just relaxes the geometry a little bit. Let's actually kind of bring up and showcase that clavicle just a little bit more. that there we go uh, I kind of broke it uh, for anatomy would a full-scale ecroche be useful absolutely yes yes if you're studying anatomy the the biggest resource you can have is anatomy for sculptors but an ecroche I have one here actually I have one right here I'll show you guys full size. Uh, shout out to Raphael Grissetti. It's actually his ecroche. I'm actually going to be designing my own, hopefully in the next year. But I 3D printed his and super, super useful. You're able to just pick it up and take a look at it. But then Anatomy for Sculptors shows you how to actually, um, how to apply that while you're sculpting. So, Visual reference is key. Being able to touch it is great. But then also, too, a digital ecroche would also help out. So there's a lot there. But if you could print one out, highly recommend it. It's really worth it. Now, if only small ones weren't expensive. Absolutely, yeah. No. Um, like I said, shout out to RFO Grisset. If you look up his website, he has. you can download his for free. So shout out to him. Check it out. That's actually why I downloaded this. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. It'd be useful to have it. All right. Okay. Now I'll start creating some fun skin stuff. So I'm going to do like some pores. So I'm actually going to... I'm going to create some pores and then I'm going to create some skin wrinkles and I'm going to do this all with a standard brush. So first things first is I let's create some skin wrinkles. So I'm actually going to use the alpha six brush. Let's kind of solo this out. And I'm actually going to be any place that's going to have some sort of fold to it. I'm going to use the alpha six. I mean, not alpha six, sorry, the alpha 60. And then let's actually go up resolution a little bit. Perfect, there we go. I'm gonna do something like that, where it's a negative cut, come across. Because even though that we're using spray, it is directional, so you can easily just drag across and get some nice movements happening. Go a little bit bigger. Go underneath, because the neck has some weird folds as well. Because again, that moves. I'm going to do a light smooth, spring that down. And that's the other thing too. I'm going to want to cut some deep details because when we're 3D printing our stuff, again, we have about 10 to 15% detail loss from the print process and the cleanup process. So any type of detailing that I do, I will want to exaggerate as well. So just something to keep in mind gonna kind of cut right there that's where there's gonna be a little bit of a bend do I use references except for the ecroche I actually use a lot of reference I have the I have an ecroche uh, poster on my wall um, I also use let me pull it up because I think it's a great resource let me pull up one of the best 
It's uh, zygotesbody.com. I use them all the time and it's completely free. And it's great, great resource. Check that one out. Uh, right now, my beef is I need to practice female fat pads because of the three full characters I have done. Two were male, so I didn't have to worry about that. Oh, yeah. I would just Google... Uh, actually, I would just Google that. Uh, female fat pads versus, and male fat pads, and that, they'll show you where they, where they go. Usually, just keep in mind that uh, female characters are usually softer. You can get away with that. Men are usually harder, but yeah. What's the spec of my PC? I'm uh, the spec of my PC. I have a um, Nvidia GeForce R RTX 2080 XD. I have an AMD 7 uh, Ryzen 7. Uh, I think it's the 3600. Yeah. Um, and then I have 48 gigs of RAM. So you have medical books, even better. Well, there you go. <laughs> you already know. Yeah, you there. There you go. Yeah. All right, so we're going to put some more wrinkles where they bend. It's also a creature, so we can get away with a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. When using medical books, what I would say is keep in mind of what's closest to the surface, because that's usually what you're going to have to sculpt. I'm curious now. Nope. Okay, great. I'm going to try to get 3080 since it came out, but also I want a PS5, so I have to choose between them. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I had an idea, but that was not going to work. Okay. Let's actually now take the alpha... I think alpha 23. I want some odd bumps on his head. There we go. Yes. Yeah, there we go. We're now detailing and getting some... A little bit of fun stuff. And it kind of just go random here. And again, now we're going to hit into some... Not all this is going to be visible, so I'm going to try to kind of push this detail a bit by using the drag rec as well. Actually using the intensity, bringing some of this up kind of splotch it a little bit. Yeah, there is a global shortage of CPUs and GPUs, absolutely. Yep. You got a 1660 graphics card. Oh yeah, that's... Yep. I use a... Uh, yes. Yes, I do use a graphic tablet. Um, I'm using an XP Pen 13.3 screen pen tablet. Okay, not smooth stronger. I'm actually going to use smooth. Actually, tone some of this down. And honestly, with the screen tablet, when I first got into it, I had a little bit of buyer's remorse. But um, I got used to it after a couple days. It was a little weird experience. So if anybody's like looking to get into uh, a screen tablet, it is kind of a little funky. Okay, now we're just going to kind of hold alt and give some negative cuts. help create a little bit of that skin feel or your new computer in january and you got it last week oh wow that's insane yeah uh last year around november i actually 
I had a 18... Was it the 18? What did I have? Oh, no, my... Sorry, not 18. I don't even know what about. I had the 1080. <laughs> I can't even speak, guys. I had the 1080. Um, and I was able to switch it to the 2080 just before uh, the main shortage started. I'm actually happy I made that switch because I don't think I would have gotten... Uh, I haven't had anything in my area. There we go. So now we're just cutting in some details. Texture looks great. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, just using the spray and then the Alpha 23 brush. Or as Alpha 23. Take the damn standard though and start cutting this uh, this jaw shape a little bit more. Play build up around his ear just a little bit. Go back and there we go so like you know i will be rendering this but you see how small this detail is like this won't 3d print much at all so i'm gonna have to really add some thicker layers and stuff on it so that's also again going back to the keeping it in mind we have to take a look at what we're doing and make sure that it's purposeful So we'll bring in more details like this throughout the creature, which gives us some variety and variance. And this stuff will show up. And then what I like to do too is back up and see if I can see that texture. If I could back up a little bit and kind of notice it, then more likely it would 3D print. So we want to kind of keep that in mind too. So again, a, a peel form. Stuff like that. But I do add these micro textures as well because when I render, that stuff comes out really nicely. So, I'll do something more like that. Kind of take a look at them. Let's go ahead and save. Yeah, I had the GTX 1080 in my old machine. Yeah, that's what I had too. I was looking for some cartoonish skin brushes and found an alpha pack from Zen Shaders. Nice. Cthulhu doesn't eat, need ears. He listens to no one. Right? Yeah. My Cthulhu just has a little, uh, has some ear holes. That's all he has. <laughs> Alright. There we go. Okay, let's actually sew this out a little bit. Let's start going here. Let's find another fun alpha. This is the really cool part about texturing that I love, especially when you're doing something like a creature. You get to kind of just play around. You don't have to adhere to any rules, you know. I mean, unless you're going for like something with a crocodile shape, right? But still, you get to kind of play around and see what works. So we'll pull up some bigger details like this. Maybe come back to, if you'll let me, back to the spray. And let's actually get like, oh yeah, that looks gross. Oh yeah, look at that. That's really gross. I like it. It's in the back of his neck a little bit. Actually mask this area off. Right there. Let's lower that intensity. Oh yeah. There we go. So add a little bit and then let's bring up the intensity a little bit more. Let's actually use drag wreck at this point. Let's see if that works out well. 
Might have to smooth it down just a little bit, blend it in. Maybe those would be some veins. There's a good idea for a film, Godzilla vs. Cthulhu summons some of him to try to steal Godzilla. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Printers are only getting better, so it's a matter of time before you'll be able to print all that. Exactly, I know. It's crazy how great 3D printers are getting. Ooh, here's some like weird alien texture too. Yeah. The key to the texturing is just going in and making sure that it blends well together. You don't want your texture to stand out as if it doesn't look consistent. But I know that could be difficult when you're look working with like softer skin versus harder skin, scales, you know, belly tissue. So you want to use a variety, but you definitely want to make sure it gets blended well together. And let's go to brush. Okay, good. Back face mask is turned on. Because I'm going to hit some of this texture pretty hard right here. Just like that. And then I'm going to come back to... You see, now I'm really just going to punch that texture. And again, we're going to back it up. You can see some noise there, so that's going to be good. I'm just going to work this texture in, blend it a little bit by some light smooth, then come back in, layer on top. If you're a normal ZBrush, I would definitely use smooth peaks. So there you go. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. We'll end up doing this to the majority of his body find it relaxing to add textures kind of like meditation i agree absolutely <laughs> i just purchased the xp pen artist 22 pro ac19 shortcut remote should arrive tuesday nice dude nice My skin wrinkles are where lighting <laughs> lightning bolts are for <laughs> right been stuck with a mouse for the last four months no oh man i mean hey if you really want a challenge you could sculpt with a mouse, but I don't recommend it. Nothing's impossible. That that should be a challenge right there. This would be a new ZBrush challenge. Sculpt with a mouse. Okay. What I want to do as well... Let me see something. I want to actually add in some muscle details before we just cover it. So let's actually take in... So the pec is, has quite a few muscles in there. It's not just one lump, but there's definitely some striation from the center of the chest that comes in. So we want to make sure that we hit that part. We're going to add in some of that muscle fiber Let's get that in there and so what I'll use to do this is I'll take the damn standard I'll actually go back to the regular the regular uh, standard brush I'll actually use the standard brush to kind of inflate around those areas. And then we'll take the damn standard again. We'll cut in right here by his underarm armpit area, right where the lats come in and connect. No hit mouse only run. Oh man, yeah. There's a difference between challenge and give yourself carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> it was funny, Liz, as I just thought that. Right when I said it, I was like, oh, man. 
as somebody i it's personally as somebody who's done uh photoshop with a mouse only the first couple times i was learning photoshop years ago i did a lot of things with a mouse and uh i will tell you it was not enjoyable my first tablet was gifted to me by a friend of mine who's like you need to stop doing that with a mouse <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Alright, I'm going to smooth this down and exaggerate this area a little bit more first. There we go. I'm going to take the move brush to fix that area a little bit. still use the mouse for Z model or so do I actually um, mainly that's my tablets fault it doesn't have the precision to really like do what I want it to do so sometimes I'll like click and drag with Z modeler and yeah it definitely uh, definitely changes things up there you go well, at a first glance, watching me use ZBrush Core, what do you guys think of ZBrush Core? I highly recommend it if you're trying to get into ZBrush Core, or if you just want to get into ZBrush in general, um, but you don't have the uh, financial means of getting into full ZBrush yet. I definitely would recommend it because it gets you started, and you can move all of your projects into full ZBrush after working on ZBrush Core. So I definitely recommend it, especially because it's super affordable as well, but I'm also curious on your guys' takes since you know even I even I was kind of struggling a little bit in the beginning, but we, we got it we got it I'm actually encouraged to play a little bit more in it, so I think next week we'll continue this project in core as well, and I'm going to give myself some homework assignment and I'm going to play a lot more with it and dive a little bit deeper. It's actually not working the way I wanted to. All right, let's add some more muscle definition. Okay, so with this, this back muscles here, we're gonna come in. I'm gonna grab this like that. So you can see where his lats are coming through. Yeah, Lazy Mouse is your friend. It always is. Yep. Hey, how are you? Feel your pain. I did my first Photoshop illustrations with a mouse, right? Yeah. I'm actually pretty good with the mouse. The only issue I have is that I have consistently I have to consistently change my intensity and focal shift. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just use the mouse as I've been modeling in Maya and various CAD software for CNC and 3D printing. Yep. Yeah. I know this is a pixel channel. So like testimonials <laughs> must be sus. But ZBrush, the full fledged thing, was hands down the best investment 3D software I've ever I've ever made dollar for dollar. Absolutely, Liz. No, you know what? I, I will be the first to say it. Well, not the first. Everybody said it. I don't know why I even said it that way. I will be hundred percent honest with you. ZBrush is the most affordable, the cheapest 3D software out there in comparison on industry standard levels. You know, I know there's other out programs out there that I'm not going to be mentioning that are free and they're great learning sources. And I completely 100% back all of those. But when you're going to be, when it, when it comes to sculpting and it comes to really getting serious about it, ZBrush is where you want to be. And I dropped... I dropped nine hundred dollars, you know. No, actually, it was like seven fifty when I paid for it. Um, but gladly would drop the nine hundred dollars if I was buying it fresh today, one-time payment. Absolutely, hands down. <clears throat> it's cheaper than most softwares out there, and you can do so much. <clears throat> and the ability, you know, to have like the support and all the stuff that comes with it, guys. I'm telling you, it's it's definitely worth the worth the investment. So if you're on the fence about it, you know. Core is your great option. Uh, ZBrush Core Mini is free, but yeah, for sure. It is 
most affordable. Yeah. And the support and the updates, the free updates. I've had five years of free updates. Like, I can't, you can't beat that. Uh, ZBrush works with almost any graphics card out there. ZBrush is more CPU over GPU. So you don't really have to worry about the GPU. Your your main issue will be making sure you have a good CPU. But I will say that I've run ZBrush Core on a Ryzen 3. No problem. I've run ZBrush Full on a Ryzen 3. Um, I had to be careful how high I took my models. But you can run it on something that low. So... Yeah, it's CPU dependent more so than GPU. I don't think my GPU struggles at all. My GPU is actually running the stream and ZBrush is, is on CPU side. Five years, I was worried about that when I got my license as one year updates. Yeah, it does say one year updates, but they update. <laughs> Including yeah, everybody here who's streamed on this channel. Yeah, it's it says one year, but trust me five years of updates and it's going strong all right have to go but thanks for the so many tips and advices will you uh, live stream again too guys i live stream here every sunday at 5 p.m pacific standard time so whatever that equates to you um but i'm here every week every sunday at 5 p.m and then if you guys would like to check out my socials as well because i'm getting ready to go soon but if you would like to check out my socials and catch me on some of my own personal live streams more than welcome to come in. I also have a Discord. I also have a YouTube channel where I'm dropping little videos about how to do certain things in ZBrush. So if you're looking for small, quick tutorials that don't take 20 minutes to explain a five minute thing, jump over there and I run through how I do it. And if it works for you, that's awesome. So go check that out as well. And my YouTube is getting bigger because I want to share all that knowledge, so. Yep, CPU, RAM, HD space. Yep, ZBrush does not use graphics card. Nope. Yeah. Youth just tanked. Youth just tanked for some reason. Oh, YouTube just tanked? Oh. Interesting. It says it's still live. Hopefully YouTube is still on. That's weird. YouTube has been doing some weird issues with the streams. My professor bought ZBrush in 2007. He still gets every update. Oh, yeah. I know somebody who paid hundred dollars for zbrush on the very first license and they are still updated and i'm like man why didn't a why didn't i know you back then and b um i wish i bought it back then <laughs> yeah all right let's go to stroke real quick and let's turn my lazy mouse down there we go so I really want to just define these muscles a little bit more before we start getting into the rest of the texture. That's super important. You good, Amaya? Nice. Yep, YouTube's fine for you. Okay, great. But yes, so you guys can find me on my channels there as well as here every Sunday. go perfect and so far guys we're at 5.6 million polys and no issues whatsoever and i know it can go higher so maybe next week we'll push and see just how far it can go really break it <laughs> it's kind of my thing i just like push these programs as hard as they go and then they and then i crash them <laughs> okay okay we're gonna take the clay brush the clay brush is really good by the way if you're trying to get like some some feeling of some muscles. If you're in full ZBrush, I really like clay tubes, but clay brush is really, really good for getting some 
some good uh like that muscle kind of fatty skin texture we'll use smooth stronger to kind of even the playing field a little bit get that going so you can see here we can build it up a little bit if you just if you just sculpt in the direction that the muscle fibers are you actually will get the look pretty quickly Really love this song, by the way. There we go. Guinness Book of World Records, the densest sphere of all time. <laughs> yeah. Next week we break it. <laughs> yeah. Over five million follies. Jeez, what setup are you running? Uh, I'm running the Ryzen Seven, and forty-eight gigs of RAM with a twenty-eighty. And I've kicked it up to 5 million because we're putting in all this like kind of skin texturing that you saw me play with on the face. And now uh, we're getting into some real details. The only time I go this high is when we get into detailing. And it's the only reason to have that kind of high poly count. But because we're doing high risk sculpting, we really want to make sure we hit all those nice, nice folds and wrinkles and all sorts of goodness there we go and this guy's super gross and I like it there we go Uh, your rig is the... Let's say, hold on. Hold on. The first thing I did on my new computer subdivided it to 58 million model. Yeah, that's... Yeah. It could go higher. I think I've had the biggest model I've had... Do you guys want to see the largest model I've ever... I think I've taken it to 72 million. I'll, I'll load up regular ZBrush and I'll show you the Gwenna model that I sculpted. I started doing a high-res texture version of her. I have a cleaner, smoother version that you've all seen on my art station, but I'll, I'll, I'll load that up. No problem. Yeah. You want to do it? Okay, cool. With room to go 80 million. <laughs> so your rig is a uh, Ryzen 5 3600. That's what I got too. Uh, ASRock uh, 570, 970, and 32 gigs of RAM. You can easily push 80 million without slowing down. Nice. Yeah, because that, that CPU is just getting for you. <laughs> ZBrush uses a different memory algorithm than things like my Blender. 70 million polys would absolutely break them, but ZBrush handles it no problem. Yeah, ZBrush, ZBrush has some black magic happening when it comes to uh, when it comes to how it handles poly, and it's fantastic. All right, let me finish this thought real quick on getting some of these uh, muscles in here. And then, and then I'll load up my Gwenum that's like really high rest. Like I think I had it at like 72 million. Because I was creating some VDMs and trying to get some, some better details going for it. Because I would love to print it with a lot more textures and stuff. I think that'd be great. And I'll like release like a version two or something on my art station. There we go. Get these buns. Okay. There we go. My brain is absolutely melting right now. <laughs> yep. Honestly, that's what makes high-res sculpting for statue work and stuff so much fun is because you could take it so high in ZBrush. Really just push the limits. Okay. So I'm going to take the clay brush, or uh, yeah, just the, ran the regular clay brush. I'm going to start going over. Because again, I kind of want this to have like some funky fat pads and I want that skin not to look perfect
I'm actually going to go down in intensity too. I don't want to add so much clay. I want to add more surface noise. And let's actually grab like a noise alpha as well. To give us a little bit of that uh, skin texture while we, while we fluff it up a little bit. Bring in some of that. Go. There you go. Adding material with an alpha on it is actually sometimes really cool. You can do some texturing and stuff pretty quickly. Okay, let's actually lower the intensity of the smooth now. There we go. Build up his lat muscles a little bit. So he's like not shredded, but he's definitely um and he's definitely he's it's like a funky dad bod shape. <laughs> there we go. Found that balance between a a tighter upper body and a and a softer core. <laughs> We're finally gonna download ZBrush now. Do it! Yeah, do it! Huzzah! Yeah, the most polys I can handle, unless I'm doing environment and my is 4 million, yeah. Crossfit. <laughs> Love that description. Cracks me up every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Okay, cool. Now we can get rid of that noise for a second and just kind of roll with a little bit of uh let's give him some back fat there we go let's go back to that noise texture a little bit more there we go there we go so a shape if you're doing anatomy and you you want um the, the buttocks to have a little bit of a shape. Think butterfly. So it comes up like this, and then it comes here, then it comes around. So think butterfly. That's a lot of times the easiest way to remember to get the right shape of the, of the back area. Let's go clay. There we go. Kind of boost that up a little bit. Drop the intensity just to bring in that texture. And we'll exaggerate some more of it. But just have that nice little light texture. Then here what we can do is we can actually come over some of these areas. Let's actually get rid of that alpha for a second. I think I'm going to use the standard brush now. There we go. Get some really cool fold effects with this, uh, with the standard brush. And then you can come in with the damn standard and kind of exaggerate some of them. All right. So we got 757, so we are coming to an end, guys. Hopefully today was helpful, informative, or just even a fun place to come hang out. Thank you all for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Just love making stuff. And keep an eye out. Um, if you are not following me on my socials and stuff, I will be releasing the Mushroom Wizard that I sculpted with ZBrush Core Mini last week. So if you weren't here for that, I think the VOD is on Twitch. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube yet, uh, but I'm releasing that for free as a thank you guys for stopping by. So thanks for the stream, a lot of fun. Thank you for the stream. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. I'm just gonna finish a quick thought here real quick. 
But let's kind of just take a look at what we got so far. So we sculpted some trees. They're still going to need to be detailed, but I don't push anything fully until the very end. And I still want to work with the ground a little bit more. I kind of want like some fibrous stuff. So we might try to come up with something cool or something different on the bottom. But remember, we got to think about 3D printing. So we'll, we'll factor in some, maybe like some broken trees or rocks or something. I think that'd be cool. So yeah, here's, here's the bad boy as it is right now. I'm actually going to hit render just so you can kind of see it. Fact. Shadows. Yeah, let's do that. There you go. You guys can see him a little bit more. So you can see the texture on his face. That's what we're going to be replicating on the rest of his body. Yes, I am going to show the large model. Thank you so much. So let's close out of this. We just saved it. Let's open up ZBrush regular and let's pull that massive model out. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Thanks for the stream. Next time I'll tune in. Hopefully I'll be in my main account. Just getting set up on Twitch. No worries, dude. I appreciate you hanging out. All right, let's load. Let's go to my storage. I got a bunch of stuff. Takes forever. Uh, I believe it's under 2020. That's when I sculpted. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Let me see. How high was this? It might take a sec. <laughs> but thank you guys so much. Okay, this one's actually... Okay, I must have decimated it. Let's see. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I must have dynameshed it down a little bit. Let me load in the, the one previous. I think that one was the massive one. This one's currently at 30 million. The entire storage holds one mod. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, this is still a work in progress. Here we go, 72 million. Let's uh, let's turn on some light. Let's hit some skin shade. There you go. So the original one didn't have all the texture that I started adding. But you can start seeing I was really starting to add in a lot more gross texture. Really just playing with some ideas. And then, yeah, so this one's 72.7 million. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah, so this is still a work in progress on getting that texture in, but yeah. And this, this took me quite a bit of time to get, right? It was based off of a Randy Bishop. No, not Randy Bishop. Oh, who's the artist who did it? Was it Randy Bishop who did the original guy? Now I'm drawing a blank on who did it, but it was based off of. Uh, um, I'll have to I'll have to figure it out. Was it Randy Bishop? It was another artist. But anyway, it's a comic artist that I found and I loved, and I really like the style, so it's based off of that. Uh, great work there. Say I have in mind. Head of dreadlocks. Would you recommend using the same method you used? this character for tentacles yeah if you're doing dreadlocks absolutely i would definitely i would definitely uh approach it very similar hot and freaky <laughs> the bit rate is shaking all your cpus use the move model right exactly yeah we're just gonna leave it like that <laughs> so yeah 72 million so zbrush can take a lot so you can push it pretty hard that's when i turn around and I started playing with some other stuff and took it down to about 30 million. So, I mean, you don't necessarily need to take it this high. Uh, but it can't, it can handle it. 
So, but anyway, guys, all right, that is it for the day. I will see you guys next week. So please make sure to subscribe if you're on YouTube, follow if you're on Twitch, because not only am I here, but there's so many other artists as well from other parts of the industry. So if you have your questions, anytime an artist goes live on Pixel Logic, feel free to stop in, say hi. Also, comment in the comment section down below on YouTube if you have a question, but you're watching this afterwards and you watch the entire stream and you're like, oh man, I got a question. Feel free to comment because somebody from Pixel will answer that. If it's not me, it will be somebody else. So anyway, guys, if I do a turntable at this high, it's going to kill it. <laughs> but here, real quick. Okay, real quick. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys. That is it. Yeah, just watch my... Everything just tanks right now. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, guys. Again, thank you guys so much, and I'll catch you later. Bye.